Good morning, everyone. Happy Kwanzaa, Habari Ghani. It is seven o'clock in the morning. I woke up half an hour ago. Um, and please forgive me if I've got the morning hoarseness. And also, I realized that um, I had the wrong time for today's broadcast. I actually had nine o'clock a.m., but it was always my intention. And I think I said it yesterday that during the week, on the weekdays, I would be filming at 7 a.m. Eastern. So hopefully some of you in the other part of the world outside of North America or the early birds here will see the notification and will join in. If you are here, please, um, good morning or good afternoon or good evening. Uh, and please put your name in the chat and where you are, where you're from, where you are at. All right, so as you know, this is the fourth round of the Kwanzaa Reflectathon. The Kwanzaa Reflectathon is, um, it's something that I started when I first uh, started my YouTube channel. Um, and it was an opportunity, and I'm in Jerry for those of you who are seeing this for the first time and who don't know anything about my channel because I know that during the holidays, there are a lot of people who are new who, um, who explore YouTube. So if you're on your holidays and you've never met me before, hello. Hi, Shanice from New York City. Good morning. Um, and hi, Regina Renee. Good morning. So um, the Kwanzaa Reflectathon is uh, an annual event that happens during Kwanzaa on my YouTube channel. And the purpose of the event is to uh, give us some time to celebrate Kwanzaa um, by reflecting on the books that we've read in the past year. And so the reflections are based on the seven principles of Kwanzaa. Yesterday, our video was about Umoja, Unity, and today our video is gonna be about Kujijagulia, or Kujijagulia, depending on how you say it, which is self-determination. Um, and this is a cozy Kwanzaa, meaning that you know, each video is going to be hopefully short, shorter than it was last. They were last year, maybe half an hour. Yesterday we were at fifty-one minutes, so a little bit longer than I expected. But I think that the the conversation we had was really great. Um, and the purpose of the video is just to create a space in this part of my life to practice uh, Kwanzaa. I practice Kwanzaa every day uh, in very in in different ways, but this. Um, this celebration at the end of the year is a good opportunity to be reminded of how important it is uh, and specifically how I'd like it to help me to continue to read with purpose. So in the chat and also on the screen, you'll see the uh, principle for today, which is Kujijagulia or Kujijagulia, self-determination. And this principle refers to uh, defining, naming, creating, and speaking for oneself. And so for me, self-determination is very important. Um, it is, I mean, I think all of the Kwanzaa principles are extremely important. The reason why Kujijigulia is important to me um, as a Black queer woman is that for me, my experience of, of myself as a queer Black person and also of, of somebody who's in community with many queer Black people, the whole idea of defining ourselves, naming ourselves, creating for ourselves, and speaking for ourselves is very, 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 very important. Um, many, many Black queer folks have experienced um, a process of coming out to themselves and coming out to other people. And in coming out, you have to first have kind of like a sense that there's something to do, that you're in some kind of transition. I know for me, um, when I came out to my parents, I was about 19, 20, um, but that wasn't like that, even though it was like my coming out to my parents moment, coming out has been like a perpetual process for me. Um, but I think that was a very defining moment because 
I, I did have to, um, I did have to be very clear about who and what I am uh, and what words I use to define myself. I had to be prepared to answer questions, to speak for myself. And I also had to be prepared to um, create an alternative way of living uh, in the event that my parents didn't accept what I shared with them, which they didn't. Um, and I think that for me, defining myself as a black person as well um, has been not necessarily challenging because I always knew that I was a black person and I always used those words to define myself. But over the years, defining myself has also included things like doing research about my ancestry, talking to relatives I'd never met before in different countries, um, learning about spiritual tra uh, traditions, particularly in Trinidad. Um, also learning more about the ways that my identity has been shaped by my knowledge of African-American traditions and histories as opposed to Caribbean histories um, or Afri African-Canadian histories or Black Canadian histories. Um, and so I'm constantly in a state of defining myself. Um, and then also you'll notice that the principle is not only, like each of the Kwanzaa principles from my perspective have an individual um, interpretation and also a collective interpretation. So everything that I've just talked about has been more about my own journey and my own um, road towards self-definition but also there is the collective or community-based self-definition. So um, defining ourselves as African descended people, black people, African-American people, African-Caribbean people, um, Afro-Latinx people, Afro-Europeans, Afro-Asians, right? Like whatever we do in terms of how we define ourselves, um, it's as much collective as it is individual, right? And part of that is, seeking to understand how others define themselves within our communities and also seeking to heal um, some of the uh, rifts and some of the mistrust that ex exist within our communities. Um, in particular, I'm thinking about um, some of the tensions that exist between diaspora communities and continental communities. Um, or different diasporas, right? We we all are where we are through choices that we made for ourselves, but mostly choices that others made on behalf of our ancestors. And that has resulted in different lived experiences and we've inherited tensions and mistrusts and suspicions. Um, and we've also inherited though, the ability to connect and understand what, what, what unifies us, which is why Umoja as the first principle is seen as the binding principle with the black candle. Um, so uh, my question to you is, what does Kuji Jagulia mean to you? Uh, and there are currently about five people who are watching. So good morning, this is great. I didn't know if anybody was gonna be able to come because of the time, but what does uh, Kuji Jagulia self-determination mean to you? What are the important parts of this principle for you this year. Um, and then, of course, because this is Onyx Pages and we are talking about books, what are the, the books that you read this year that uh, reflected the principle of Kujijagulia or self-determination? Now, I did not put my book stack together, but while you put your comments in the chat, I'm gonna pull a few books from my collection. I'm gonna look at what, I'm gonna focus mostly on what I uh, read this year, but if I pull some books that I read before, that's just because that's what we're doing today. So what does Kuji Jagulia mean to you? And I'm just gonna turn around and look at my bookshelf. Ah, okay, I have, I'm gonna try and limit it to five books. Oops, 
there's been a plant disaster. I have a lot of very long, 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 long plants in here. Um, Yeah, I think. Hmm. This is one I don't really talk. I have one that I don't really talk about that much, um, but I will today. And let's do a middle grade. I have one on my altar, on our altar. Um, yeah, am I gonna do that? Yeah, okay. So we've got a few here. Okay, so I've got my book stack. Let's see what you have said. Okay, Shanice, being authentic and unapologetically me. So that is what self-determination means for you. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I totally, I hear that. Thank you for that. Naming myself and naming my own purpose. Mm -hmm. Regina Renee, one of the ways that I see that you do that is in your with your name and really explaining to people that your name is Regina Renee. It's not one or the other, it's both. And there is a reason for that. And I really remember that moment in quarantine pages where you explained um, your name and why it's important to you, that it's it's said properly and correctly in all of its fullness. And that was a really important moment in getting to know you a little bit better. So um, yeah, cool. Okay, it really was adulthood rights that I just pulled off my shelf, so yes. Okay, so we're into the books. So for Sharnies um, and anybody else who's here, please feel free to use the live chat function. That's how I'll see your comments. And you can share what you what Kujijagulia means to you and also a book that reminds you of that principle. Okay, so one book that Sharnese read this year um, was Juliet Takes a Breath by Gabby Rivera. And you think this um, story fits perfectly with today's principle. Okay, so... I think I know which book you're talking about. Let me try to find it. But while I try to find it, please let me know what it is, what it was about the book that um, reminded you of this. And I remember, I definitely remember seeing this book. It's, it's got so many gorgeous covers. I'm trying to find one so that I can put up the cover. Okay, this is one of my favorite covers. Let me just get it on full screen if I can. Nope, it's not, not letting me. Juliet takes a breath. Uh, let's see if I can get the image itself to be full page. No, it's not going to let me do that. Okay. Um, okay, that's good enough. Okay, so I'll share the screen so people can see this cover because I won't be able to put up the, uh, the book, but I want people to see it because I know that people use these videos to build their TBR lists.
Okay, there we go. So you should be able to see Juliet takes a breath. Okay, um, so yeah, um, I love, love, love the cover. Let me read the synopsis while you're putting in your comment. So this is, um, okay, so this is the graphic novel adaptation and the original, I guess the original looks like that. Juliet respira profundo or Juliet takes a breath. Juliet Milagros Palante is leaving the Bronx and headed to Portland, Oregon. She just came out to her family and isn't sure if her mom will ever speak to her again. But don't worry, Juliet has something kind of resembling a plan that'll help her figure out what it means to be Puerto Rican, lesbian, and out. See, she's going to intern with Harlow Brisbane, her favorite feminist artist, or Harlow Brisbane, someone whose last work on feminism, self-love, and lots of other things will help Juliet find her ever-elusive epiphany. There's just one problem. Harlow's white, not from the Bronx, and doesn't have the answers. Okay, maybe that's more than one problem, but Juliet never said it was a perfect plan. Critically acclaimed writer Gabby Rivera adapts her best-selling novel alongside artist Cecilia or Celia Moscot in an unforgettable queer coming-of-age story explaining race, identity, and what it means to be true to your amazing self, even when the rest of the world doesn't understand. I really like that. Thank you for sharing that. I would not have known, I would not have spent time with that, with that synopsis otherwise. So thank you for that. Okay. Um, and Regina Renee, you have chosen, oops, stop sharing. You've chosen Forgotten Girl, which I might have in my, I have it, <clears throat> but I think I put it in the back. So it's not going to be easy for me to find. I have two different rows of books. I have rows that are in the front and then I have stacks behind these books, but uh, Forgotten Girl, yeah, I don't have it up here. That one was by India, do I? No, I don't, by India Hill, which I've read. So what is it about Forgotten Girl? You know what, another one, another really good one that that reminds me of is Pet by Aqua Eke Amezi, um, which I will, I it's in the back as well. I'm just gonna read the synopsis for Forgotten Girl. Okay. On a cold winter night, Iris and her best friend Daniel sneak into a clearing in the woods to play on freshly fallen snow. There, Iris carefully makes a perfect snow angel only to find the crumbling gravestone of a young girl, Avery Moore, right beneath her. Immediately, strange things start to happen to Iris. She begins to have vivid nightmares. She wakes up to find her bedroom window wide open, letting in the snow. She thinks she sees the shadow of a girl lurking in the woods, and she feels the pull of the, aband the abandoned grave calling her back to the clearing. Obsessed with figuring out what's going on, Iris and Daniel start to research the area for a school project. They discover that Avery's grave is actually part of a neglected and forgotten black cemetery dating back to a time when white and black people were kept separate in life and in death. As Iris and Daniel learn more about their town's past, they become determined to restore Avery's grave and finally have her have proper respect paid to Avery and the others buried there but they have awakened a jealous and demanding ghost, one that's not satisfied with their plans for getting recognition, one that is searching for a best friend forever, no matter what the cost. I read and enjoyed Forgotten Girl, so thank you for that as well. All right, so um, if you are watching and you've just joined us, please feel free to say where you're 
where you're um, watching from. Um, also, please share your understanding of Kujijigulia or self-determination. You don't need to be a practitioner of Kwanzaa in order to do that. And then also feel free to share the title of a book that reminds you of the principle of self-determination. And again, uh, the principle is Kuji Jagulia. And this principle refers to defining, naming, creating, and speaking for oneself. And welcome, Habari Ghani. Okay, so I have chosen six books, seven books, seven, six, that um, I wanna talk about. Okay, so the first Kuji Jagulia book is Root Magic by Eden Royce. This is her debut middle grade novel. It follows these, these siblings, Jez and, Jay and Jez, yeah, Jez and Jay. So this um, is set in the 1960s in the Gullah Geechee community. Um, and these siblings are dealing with a change that's going on in their um, in their village place where they live. Um, these schools are just being integrated. And so um, Jez and Jay are going to a different school for the very first time. And as a result of the integration, they have to deal with a lot of the um, racism and bullying and abuse that happened to the first children in integrated schools. Jez and Jay have also experienced, recently experienced the passing of their grandmother, who was the keeper of magic in their household as the matriarch. Um, and while that's happening, uh, Jez and Jay are also encountering, well, Jez mostly is encountering these strange happenings around her. And as the book, as the story progresses, we realize that she has been, um, uh, I don't want to spoil it, but she has encountered a mystical, magical being. And she learns about her own inherited magic and also about the magic around her. Um, and if you look, I'm just gonna bring this really close to the camera. You'll see she's got something in her pocket. She's got a book, magical book. Her brother is holding something that looks like a potion. And if you look super close, what she has in her pocket, I don't know if you can make out what she has in her pocket, but all of that is relevant to the story. So that is root magic. And I think that it definitely um, represents uh, Kuji Jagulia. Okay, all right. The next book is Slay by Brittany Morris. And I think that the main character, what is her name? Kira is definitely, definitely determined. Um, and not only that, but I think that she um, is engaged in a project of self-determination as well. So for example, let me just talk about the book first. So in this book, Kira is the, the creator. She's incognito though. She is the creator of a game called Slay. Um, she is, oh, I was going to say, I'll say something in a second, but she's the creative of this game. It's a game for black players and it's set in Nubia in this world where like everything and everyone is black and they love being black and they love all black things. And they, it's a role-playing game and they do battles and all these kinds of things. Um, in, in the real world, like outside of the game world, Kira it has moved to a new school with her boyfriend, Malcolm, and her sister, and they're the only Black kids in that school, and it's a bougie school, and she experiences a lot of um, like racism and also is surrounded by a lot of white students who don't really understand or, or seek to understand what it means to be a Black student. And while all of that is happening in the, and she lives in like in a family that's super Black and all that, um, she's expected to go to a historical black college. 
uh, and all of these things. Um, but something is happening in the game. So a boy gets killed um, for, for a game related issue. Uh, a black boy gets killed and that just sends a shockwave through the gaming community, through the Slay community. And it also results in her being revealed as the creator, potentially being revealed as the creator of the game. And of course, once people find out that she has created this black game for black people, of course, she is labeled a racist uh, and she faces the potential, the potential of a lawsuit. And so the story is about like some of the main questions here is, well, who spilled the beans? Who's responsible for the death? What's going to happen to her um, with this lawsuit? And she has to like go through the revealing of who she is. And she's really nervous about losing, potentially losing the game that she spent so much time creating. It was a really great book. Uh, I did a review on it, so you can find it on the channel. Uh, and yeah, definitely a Kuji Jagulia book. I I don't think they did that. There might actually be a mention of Kwanzaa in this book, like in passing. But anyway, that's the second book. Uh, the third book is one I probably have not talked about on this channel. I'm just going to let you gaze upon the cover for a second. Okay, you've probably not read this book, but you should read this book. In fact, I might read it again this year. Um, and I know this year is gonna end this week, I get it. But this is The Chaos by Nalo Hopkinson. It is one of the books that people don't really talk about. It's a YA um, and it, it's really, it's really, chaotic. This is really named well. So this book came, um, this book came out in, is it 2000? Oh, 2012. Not 2000. Okay. I'll read the synopsis. Um, Scotch. So this is Scotch. Scotch has never quite, yes, yes. Regina Renee, I'm glad that you've picked up this book because of the cover, because it's great. And Sharnese, yes, the cover is definitely dope. Scotch has never quite fit in with her white Jamaican father and black Canadian mother. She doesn't belong anywhere. Though recently she feels different for stranger reasons. Her skin is being covered in a black stickiness that won't go away. But soon, Scotch has bigger problems. She's out with her brother when a bubble of light appears. Scotch dares him to touch it. He does, and then he disappears. A moment later, a volcano erupts in Lake Ontario, and all Toronto is invaded by the chaos. Scotch is desperate to find her brother, but she doesn't know where to search in a city gone mad. Mythical creatures are walking the streets and ordinary people are transforming in truly weird ways. Scotch herself is getting blacker and blacker. Can she find her brother before she becomes completely unrecognizable? So, yes. Um, I read this book twice and my hardcover copy of it is in the back of this shelf here. Um, but let's just, let's just let that settle for a second. It's interesting that all the books that we've mentioned so far are either middle grade or young adult or new adult. Um, so yeah, the chaos is a great Kujijagulia story because and I just love the idea of her getting blacker and blacker and blacker. And she's, you know, what happens when she becomes completely unrecognizable to her brother. Um, but yeah, there are other things about Scotch that's pretty cool. Scotch is very badass. She is um, very comfortable with her own sexuality. She's a dancer, so she's on the step team. And she's really, really talented. 
uh, and she's also super smart and rebellious. Um, I actually, yeah, it's it's funny because the expression on her face, it's not as defiant as I think the character actually is, but it's a really good book. Yeah. Um, yes, Kyra, you said that's a lot. What's a lot? Like her attitude? <laughs> It is a lot. It's great. Um, <clears throat> the first time I read, I read the book, I was kind of like, this is like, it really, it felt really chaotic to read it. But when I first read this book, I hadn't read um, a lot of like dystopian stuff. So, or at least hadn't read a lot of it recently at the time. So I wonder how it'll land on me now, now that I've read a bunch of other things. Like I've read, I've read probably hundreds of books since I've last since I last read the chaos so we'll see okay the next book that I oh yes her skin tone thing don't shy away from it just because of that it's a very very interesting book and it brings in folklore um, from a number of different places it actually I think it brings in um, like Caribbean folklore West African slash Caribbean folklore and Scandinavian folklore, like together. Like I think we see this character that is that comes out of like Nordic or Scandinavian. And I'm I'm ignorant, so sorry that I'm using the wrong words, but there's some European folklore there and it shows up in a very interesting way. Okay. Three more books and Kyra, what what Kujijugulia book do you want to talk about? And also for the nine of you who are watching, good morning or hello, uh, Habari Ghani. Uh, please feel free to chat in the chats. Um, let us know what Kujijugulia means to you as a Kwanzaa principle and a book that um, reminds you of the principle. Okay, I have three more. A Song Below Water. Uh, there is an interview on my channel. It's either my channel or Chloe's channel, Thistle and Verse, with the author Bethany Morrow. And this is the story of these two. Um, I'm just gonna read the synopsis. In a society determined to keep her under lock and key, Tavia must hide her siren powers. Meanwhile, Effie is fighting her own family struggles as she is pitted against literal demons from her past. Together, these best friends must navigate the perils of high school's junior year. But everything changes in the aftermath of a siren murder trial that rocks the nation when Tavia accidentally lets out her magical voice at the worst possible moment. Soon, nothing in Portland, Oregon seems safe. To save themselves from drowning, Tavia and Effie's unbreakable sisterhood must prove to be the strongest magic of all. So that is Song Below Water. I'm not gonna talk about it too much because I'm gonna end the chat soon. Yes, another dope cover. Uh, and then we've got Home is Not a Country by Sophia Elilo. And this is about this girl um, and her name is Naima. Um, is that her name? Yeah, Nima. And she is living with her single mom in an apartment building. Um, and her mother immigrated and her mother talks a lot about her home country. And, and Nima starts realizing, she starts thinking about what her life would have been like if her parents hadn't immigrated, who she would have been, like the possible, the possibilities, um, kind of like a that whole idea of the butterfly effect, you know, one decision can change the course of the future. So she spends time in this liminal space thinking about what, who she would have been, what she would have been like had her parents stayed. Um, and then that, that musing ends up being literal. And that's all I can say about this book. It's written in verse. It's just something that needs to be experienced. But in the last third of this book, um, she starts making some decisions for herself and defining herself. And it's spectacular. This is a spectacular book. Good morning, Wander. Okay, let's see what folks have to say. So Kyra, being trans, this day is what sold me on Kwanzaa because it lets me be my, more of myself, to use your language of yesterday. 
Thank you. Thank you. And welcome, Kyra. You are welcome in our family. Um, and yeah, like it's um, it's really, really, it's really powerful. Kyra, I'm not sure if you have read Pet um, by Akwayeke Amezi, but you might enjoy it if you haven't. And that, I'll actually grab it. I'll try and just grab it over there if I can pull my books back, um, because I think you might you might appreciate that one. Um, and you were here yesterday, so you know about um, Good Luck Girls and Sisters of Reckoning. Um, and Kyra, no books yet, not well read enough. Morning. What would you like? Oh, thanks. Pet by Akwayeke Amezi. It might be behind here, or it might be behind here, but it's a little book called, it's called Pet, it's purple and blue. Thank you. Tell me to the rescue. Um, and good morning, Wander. Wonder. Good morning. Oh, you've never heard of it. Good. Um, let me think if there's any, I'm just trying to think of books with, you know what? Have you read Lagoon? Have you read Lagoon by Nnedi Okorafor? Because that is also a, a self-determination book. Um, and there, um, there's a really interesting group of young, of young people in that story who you might appreciate. Okay, and then of course the, the last book that I had in my prepared stack was Adulthood Rights um, by Octavia E. Butler. And I just have to show you that I definitely played it. <laughs> you thought it was gonna be easy? <laughs> um, yeah, this is one of the books that we read. There it is. Thank you. Thank you. Um, this is one of the books that we read in the Octavia E. Butler Slow Read this year. And um, this is the second book in the Xenogenesis series. The premise is that um, a woman named Dawn wakes up after a war um, and a huge, like, cataclysmic experience on Earth. Everybody on Earth is either dead or They've been taken by these aliens, and they've been um, they've been in suspended animation in a coma-like sleep for hundreds of years. The aliens start waking them up to understand them. Um, these aliens are called the Owen Kali, and they wake up a black woman named Lilith Iapo, and they decide that she is going to be the first who is awoken and the one who is going to um, train humans for like their next experience for their return to earth but these aliens are compelled to engage in genetic mixing and so they're not just going to let the humans go back to earth they are compelled to mix their genes um and they want to leech humans of these problematic traits which are hierarchy and uh, what is it? Hierarchy and something else. What was it, Regina Renee? There were these two traits. One was hierarchy. It's their compulsion for hierarchy and something else. What was the second thing? Anyway, um, so this is the second book and the main uh, character in this book is named Akin. Um, and Akin is special because um, he was born of, he's a construct born of a, a human woman. Uh, and that's like the first genetic blend uh, since the Owen Kali arrival, invasion, involvement in humanity. And so Akin um, chooses a, his, his own path. And so this is a rite of passage, this book, but Akin definitely goes through um, this self-determination. I hope I did that justice. And okay, let's see. You have Fresh Water. Yep. Um, Fresh Water, one of my favorite books of 2019 by Akwa Eke Emezi. Amazing book. Um, Aqua, anything that Akwa Eke Emezi writes is beautiful. I have um, The Death of Vivek Oji, but I haven't read that. So I don't know if that's a Kujijigulia one, but it seems like it would be. I think that everything that they write is very much like that. And actually, another um, 
another writer who has a lot of themes of self-determination is Karen Lord. Um, and the only book that I have up here uh, by Karen Lord, Dr. Karen Lord, is The Unraveling. Um, actually, no, I have, okay, because I think um, The Best of All Possible Worlds by Karen Lord is also a great um, Kuchijigulia book. A proud and reserved alien society finds its homeland destroyed in an unprovoked act of aggression and the survivors have no choice but to reach out to the indigenous humanoids of their adopted world to whom they are distantly related. They wish to preserve their cherished way of life, but doing so may mean changing their culture forever. Working together to save this vanishing race, a man and a woman from two clashing societies will uncover ancient mysteries with far reaching ramifications. And as their mission hangs in the balance, the unlikely team, one cool and cerebral, the other fiery and impulsive, just may find in each other their own destinies and a force that transcends all. So this is the best of all possible worlds. That is a black woman. I know that the face is blown out, but that's a black woman. Um, and that's a black man. And this is the best of all possible worlds. Um, yes, intelligence and hierarchy. Okay, um, these are some other of Dr. Karen Lord's books. Redemption and Indigo, the Galaxy Game and the Unraveling, or sorry, and Unraveling. Uh, if you follow me on Instagram, I will take a picture of this book stack, so it'll be there. Um, and then the last one that I'm gonna talk about is Pet by Akwayeke Emezi. There are no monsters anymore, or so the children in the, in the city of Lucille are taught. Jam and her best friend Redemption, I love that name, uh, have grown up with this lesson all their lives. But when Jam meets Pet, a creature made of horns and colors and claws, who emerges from one of her mother's paintings and a drop of Jam's blood, she must reconsider what she's been told. Pet has come to haunt to hunt a monster, and the shadow of something grim lurks in Redemption's house. Jam must fight not only to protect her best friend, but also to uncover the truth. And the answer to the question, how do you save the world from monsters if no one will admit they exist? In their riveting and timely young adult debut, acclaimed novelist Akweke Amezi asks difficult questions about what choices you can make when the society around you is in denial. Um, Kyra, this one's for you. I think you'll love this book. Pet by Akweke Emezi. All right. Yes. Yes, so definitely read that. Yeah, read Lagoon. Yeah, it is a stunning book. Very, very stunning book. It is a beautiful cover. Thank you, Regina Renee. So that's the answer to my question. What were the two human qualities? Um, and, and interestingly enough, the Owen Colley associate intelligence and hierarchy as a dangerous combination that is um, most dangerous when it's expressed through um, maleness, right? Um, and yes, and yes, let's celebrate. Okay, everyone, um, I want to thank you very much. This has been a wonderful conversation. We're at 44 minutes, so we're shorter than yesterday, trying to get it down to half an hour, but you're so amazing. This is it. Um, so Habari Ghani, happy Kwanzaa. I hope that um, today is an opportunity for you to reflect on the principle of kujijagulia, of self-determination, and just to put it back up here, um, you need a, a microphone recommendation. Let me just, if you like the way that I sound, if you like the way that I sound right now, 
I'm always tempted to do ASMR, but I'm I'm just not loud. I'm too loud for that. Um, I'm using this microphone, the blue microphone. Um, I think that it sounds good, but it, um, it only connects to a laptop. I haven't figured out how to connect it to a camera. Um, and also I have the Rode video microphone, which sounds really good as well. Um, and then when I first started YouTube, I used a lapel mic, which was great, but it also always, it showed up. So those are the microphones that, uh, yeah, I have. I have a couple others, but those are the ones that I use mainly. Um, okay. And yes, if you, Regina Renee has come to the rescue with um, Yeti. So Tomi has a Yeti one, the blue one. Um, it's a podcast microphone and I, the sound is delicious. I don't, I haven't used it because it's Tomi's, um, but there's that as well. But there are lots of great um, videos on what microphone you can use. Anyway, stop trying to get me to 50 minutes with your questions about microphones. Okay, Shanice? We have to end before 50 minutes. So Kujijigulia, self-determination. This principle refers to defining, naming, creating, and speaking for oneself. Have a wonderful Kwanzaa today. Uh, I will see you tomorrow at 7 a.m. Eastern, where we will start with our next principle. And at some point, we will show you our Kwanzaa altar. So you'll see that soon. Have a great rest of your day. Read with purpose, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.